So vestibular rehabilitation is to help retune any imbalance in the function of the balance system in the ears. Um, it's basically it's, it's physiotherapy for the for the balance system. So by getting people to repeat the same movements over and over and over again, either head movements or body movements in certain situations, just helps the brain to start to adapt its reactions to the information it's getting to try and find the correct reaction and get rid of the feelings of dizziness and imbalance that people get when there's a, a mismatch of information from the ears and the brain. So things like moving the head left and right with the eyes open, with the eyes closed, up and down. One of the key ones is working on the vestibular ocular reflex, which is what the ears are telling the brain to do with the eyes. And a lot of that is based around this kind of movement where you stare at a stationary object, keep the eyes locked on that one thing, and turn the head like you're saying no to it. But the important thing is that you keep that object nice and in focus and clear. We start off with simple exercises with people sitting down in a nice bland environment and then we start to make it harder as the exercise gets easier and more tolerable and we start to introduce things such as standing up or more complex environments, standing on more complex um, so, uh, floorings, different pattern backgrounds and as much as we can change as is needed but everything is done entirely dependent upon each individual's difficulties. So what one person finds easy with the exercises, another person will find extremely difficult. And it's the things that people struggle with a little that the exercises need to work on. The key point is having the diagnosis as to what's causing the balance problem. You can have a number of different conditions all adding in to the feeling of dizziness or imbalance. So knowing exactly what's going on will dictate exactly what it is that we need to do about it. Treatment for a simple vestibulopathy is very different to dizziness being caused by migraine or from BPPV, which is the crystals loose within the ear. But again, different to many airs disease. But having one condition causing you dizziness doesn't necessarily rule out other things causing you some of the dizziness as well. So knowing exactly what is going on lets us know what we need to do about it. Whether that's just one simple thing, such as just the exercises with the um, vestibular rehabilitation exercises, or whether we need to also look at migraine control or Epley maneuvers as well, it tells us what we need to do. The tests that we do, people are always very anxious about undergoing. It's not as bad as you'd expect. There's things like the computerized dynamic posturography, which is a machine where you stand on the platform and you've got three surrounding walls, essentially. And sometimes they rock a little bit. The platform sometimes rocks a little bit, but the movement generally is caused by your movement. So the less you move, the less the walls move. But you are perfectly safe, and there's always someone standing right behind you as well anyway, so it's nowhere near as bad as people expect. Um, video nice diagmography, where we put some goggles on, get people watching a few lights, a few bars, um, move the head in different positions, do the hall pikes test. And again, it's all very gentle and again, not anywhere near as bad as people expect it will be. And there's also the caloric test, which again is one of the ones that people read all sorts of things about on the internet and dread. It can cause some feelings of dizziness during the test, but it is very, very controlled. It's very short lasting and it fades away very quickly if there's any dizziness felt. But what that one involves is here in Leicestershire, we use air. So we blow warm or cool air into the ear for a short time and then record the eyes response for a short time. And then anything fades away very quickly from there. We do that on both ears and that gives us information as to whether one ear is functioning significantly more or less than the other. It doesn't tell us why. That is very important to come from the history. To if you've got a good history, you'll have a very good idea of what to expect from that anyway, or the doctor will have a good idea of what to expect. Some areas do use water for caloric, and that can feel a slightly stronger stimulus than the air, but again, that still gives us the information as to if one ear is functioning more or less than the other. Tell me what some of the patients that you've seen um, have said to you when they walk in 
after being diagnosed with a, a balanced condition, vestibulopathy, for instance, what sort of impact has it had on their lives? A lot of people cry. Um, it's very, very distressing. Just the imbalance in itself is very distressing. It takes away your confidence. It takes away that feeling of being able to live independently. To suddenly feel that you're unable to go out and about by yourself is very distressing. The vast majority of people, when they first walk through a door, are expecting that they've either got something like a brain tumour or possibly MS or Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, things like that, dependent on age range. Just from the fact they've got feelings of dizziness, they look at things on the internet and the internet is a wonderful thing, can get you a lot of information, but it can also misdirect you and give you more cause for concern. Often with balance problems, people are coming in with stiff necks and headaches, which again builds into that fear that there's actually something seriously wrong in the head. Um, and just the anxiety with it. Not only have they got a balance problem that they've not known what the cause is, but the are they going to have to live with this for the rest of their life? And the impact that it has on them, their relationships with their partners, their friends, their workplace, it's very distressing. So a lot of people come in and cry. And that's, that's not just me doing that to people. But once we know what we're dealing with, we can deal with it. So we can look at all the different reasons why you're struggling with things like walking the kids to school. And actually, it's not the walking the children to school that you're struggling with. It's the walking past the railings of the school and all the kids running around and all the people milling around. It's just overwhelming for the balance system. Things like going into supermarkets and getting into the supermarket, suddenly looking at it and going, I can't do this and making a run for it to go back to the car and go home again. We can look at that and, and pinpoint why it is that you're getting that feeling that actually it's a balance problem, that you're over relying on your visual information and you're just being swamped with sensory overload. You've got the bright lights, the shiny floors, all the colours, the rows of, and aisles of the different colour packaging and all the people, it's just too much. And rather than it being described as, I'm scared to go out, actually it's, we can pinpoint that this is happening because of this and it's normal for a balance problem. There's a lot that we can do. You talked a little bit about the sort of psychological effect and I think that's one of the biggest issues, isn't it, for people with a balance condition, it's overcoming um, fear to some degree and not being able to do things that you could do once upon a time. Very much so. The anxiety is a big part of imbalance. Everybody that gets a chronic condition of any kind Obviously, we see people with balance problems. The balance problems will cause anxiety and stress. It's impossible for it not to. But stress and anxiety in itself can cause feelings of imbalance. So not only are you feeling bad because your balance is, isn't doing the job that it should be, but that makes you stressed. The more stressed you get, the worse you feel, the worse you feel, the more stressed you get, and it goes into that vicious cycle. Pretty much everybody see that happens with and that can be dealt with. Often we find that just dealing with the balance problem in itself and the person starting to notice there is improvement from that helps to start to reduce the anxiety. Sometimes just being able to be told this is the reason that you're feeling bad stops the anxiety. Once you know what to deal with, you can start to deal with it and okay, we can do this. But sometimes the anxiety and the stress starts to take over. So although we are making progress with the balance problem itself, the stress of all oh, but what if starts to just build and build. You start to say so you, you don't go out quite so much because you feel dizzy, because you've gone into that, pos that position before that situation and it's made you dizzy, so you don't go into that one again. You then look at going into a different situation and that little voice in the back here saying, yeah, but you were dizzy there, I'm going to be dizzy there, although you've never experienced it. So you go into that situation with the anticipation that you're going to be dizzy. By the time you get there, the stress has built up that much that, yes, you are dizzy when you get there. 
which confirms that you knew it, you were going to be dizzy, you were, avoid that one as well. The next situation comes up, I will be dizzy there, and it becomes into that self-fulfilling prophecy, and the anxiety builds and builds and builds. So although the, the balance problem itself may be improving, and the vestibular system recovering, there's that fear and anxiety element of, but I can't, but what if this happens? That's very, very common. So what would your advice be in that case then? It's very important that you keep as active as you can to try to do things, push your boundaries just a little bit at a time. Not take a flying leap into, right, well, I'll, I'll go on a bike ride down a canal path. Please don't do that, that's not safe. But keeping things as active as you can, keep your head mobile, try and go for a little walk around your house, then around your garden, and then possibly just up the road a little bit. And if you have to go with someone, that's fine. Gradually try and reduce that, but do your best to try and carry on doing things you enjoy. The only way to improve the balance really is to keep stimulating it and giving it that same information over and over and over. But if need be, seek further help for the, for the stress and anxiety as well. There are counsellors that specialise in stress management techniques. Things like cognitive behavioural therapy might be worth looking into. For some people, a short time on antidepressants, if the GP feels that's necessary, that's fine. But being aware that the stress and anxiety is having a response and trying to acknowledge it and tackle it can go a long way in helping. So there's no quick fix? No, definitely no quick fix. As much as I would love to say that you could come in, we give you the diagnosis and we say, take this pill. It's not how it works, unfortunately. The only way to improve an imbalance in the function of the balance system in the ear for vestibulopathy is physiotherapy. And physiotherapy takes time and it takes a lot of effort. It's like if you're trying to build up muscles in your arm, picking a weight up once or twice, maybe, once a week or so, you're not going to build up muscle in your arm. If you do it little and often, every day for months and months, you start to build muscle. Once you start to see the improvement, it gives you that extra little spur on to keep going, and you keep going, and it builds and it builds, and it's the same with the balance system. You need to stimulate it for a long time. It will take, unfortunately, many, many months and a lot of hard work on, on your part but it gets there with perseverance, but only with perseverance and hard work.